This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. Welcome to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today's topic is called the Family Estate Organizer. And with me today, I have Kelsey Banky. Welcome, Kelsey. Thanks, Mary. Kelsey and I are both certified financial planners at Stirk Financial, and we spend a lot of time working with people and with families and their assets. And one of the things that we consistently find is that it's kind of hard for people to wrap their arms around and organize their lives financially. Absolutely. The the older you get and the further in life you go, the more complicated things seem to get just <laughs> naturally. So yes. um, finding a way to organize all of it is definitely a highlight or something people are interested in. Yes. So we um, have this concept called the family estate organizer, and we want to talk about how it works because it's something that if you wanted to, you could certainly do on your own, or if you wanted help with it, then you could certainly reach out to us. But the family estate organizer, the purpose of it is so that you have a simplified, organized place where you and your family always know where all the important documents are. And we're going to kind of go through what some of those are and what belongs in a family estate organizer, but also why it's important. And what I think is that you're going to probably smile and giggle a little bit because you'll recognize yourself in some of these examples. (laughs) So, all right. Think about if you're married, I want you to think about you and your spouse. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Is one of you the person who does the filing and the organization? And if you were gone, would the other spouse know where to find anything or would they be completely clueless? (laughs) What do you think, Kelsey? How many people come in and there's one person that handles it all? I would say that's the rule. And the fact that two people handle it in the household would be the exception. (laughs) I would agree with that. Yeah. So people are probably laughing to themselves out there. They're either thinking, yep, I'm so glad my wife does all that organization. Or they're thinking, yep, my spouse would be clueless. (laughs) (laughs) So and, and pleasantly clueless. What I find is that people that don't know where to find stuff or don't do that organization are completely and totally fine with it. They don't want that job. Right. But if something would happen to the person in your family who takes care of that documentation or knows where everything is or even even as the one that knows what all you have, if something happens to them and you don't have some kind of organization that you can point to, it can be an absolute nightmare. It's hard enough figuring out what we personally have for things, but to try to figure out what someone else has too, boy, that's a tough thing. So... Um, part of what the family estate organizer does is it gives you as spouses a mutual filing system where when one of you would pass away or wouldn't be available, the other will know exactly where everything is and how to go about moving forward in their lives financially. And if you're single, then it's going to give you a filing system where when you pass away, your heirs are going to know exactly where everything is and exactly what to do in order to help deal with your estate planning. Okay. So I know that we have had situations, Kelsey, where people have come in after they've lost a parent or a loved one and they come in with the box and they don't even know where to begin, but they have this box of stuff. Yes. That's happened multiple times, actually. (laughs) Uh, it, it, it is just that, is that if you don't know what the organization or the filing system is, or if there is none, then you just have to start playing detective. And sometimes the clues are right out in front of you, and sometimes they are really difficult to wrap your head around. And, and even down to small little things, such as um, when my grandmother passed away, we didn't know she was getting like seven different magazine subscriptions that we needed to cancel. And I mean, it's just <laughs> you, you, when you start to, to really think about how many things are automated in our lives and how many things just regularly happen and how many things would need to be stopped or changed in the event of a death it can start to get very overwhelming. So that's where an organizational tool such as the Family Estate Organizer can really start to put some structure around um, what a person has going on in their financial life. 
Yeah. And, you know, I also think about this in terms of somebody that becomes a caregiver. So let's just say that the spouse who is normally the one that took care of everything uh, becomes ill or maybe they start to have signs of Alzheimer's or dementia or something like that, then there still is issues that need to be taken care of and your financial life is going to roll on no matter what somebody's health is. So that this family estate organizer is going to bring all those important documents together in a single place in a single system that allows you or your beneficiaries to not only have that filing system, but when you pass away, your beneficiaries won't have to look through every file cabinet, every drawer, every safe deposit box to try to find everything. They really will be able to have a huge leg up to settle the entire estate simply by focusing on what's inside this binder. So it's very complete that way. And we've designed it in such a way to make sure that it's the ultimate tool to help when that time comes. So when you think about it, and and Kelsey and I have have focused on this kind of thing for a lot of years now, doing something like this, creating something like this for yourself is helpful, but it is a giant gift that you can give to your beneficiaries, right? Okay, so what are the kind of things that go into a family estate organizer? (laughs) There's quite a few of them. So we're going to talk about some of the obvious ones, and then we're going to talk about the ones that are a little bit more obscure, but quite frankly, are probably some of the most helpful when it comes to your beneficiaries or your spouse having to pick up and handle things if you're no longer able to. Okay. All right. So some of the things that belong in a family estate organizer, we're going to talk about some of the tabs that we use. First of all, You need to know where your bank accounts are. So a lot of people nowadays have bank accounts at multiple places. Kelsey, how many different banks do you use? I use two. Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know that I have relationships with two banks and I have a safety deposit box at a third one. (laughs) <laughs> mostly because the two banks that I used didn't have safety deposit boxes. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, well, okay, I got to go to find the safety deposit box. So I actually have three banking relationships in my life. Now, how anybody would know that I even had that safety deposit box somewhere else wouldn't be on anybody's radar because I don't have a bank account there. And so I don't get any level of regular statements. Okay, so bank accounts, not necessarily having to worry about what's in the bank. You know, that's not necessarily what we're trying to do here, but to have records of where those bank accounts are in your family estate organizer, where your savings accounts are, where your checking accounts are, where your safe deposit boxes are, where your CDs are, is going to help people understand what they need to do when you're no longer able to take care of this yourself. Okay. The next tab that we look at is post-tax investments. So investments that have already had the majority of the taxes paid on them. Okay. So post-tax investments might be something like Roth IRAs. Post-tax investments might be mutual fund accounts. They might be stocks that you have out there, those kind of things. And so your post-tax investments, we like to separate them from your pre-tax investments just because um, the tax structure is so different inside them. So just having a list of what some of those investments are. Now, it might be something where you keep an annual statement in your family estate organizer, or it might be something that you just have a cover page where they're all listed. But knowing where your investments are and breaking them out on a post-tax and a pre-tax or a tax-favored investment side is something that makes a lot of sense. You know, one of the things that it people don't really think about when it comes to their investments is how those taxes impact their beneficiaries. So Kelsey, when you've worked with people in the past and people have had an IRA and they are saying, well, what should we do with this? It's really common for people not to understand all the different options, isn't it? Absolutely. And and even the the owners 
don't always re- realize how things are going to pass down. So we have a lot of conversations about that. Um, but an IRA is going to have a beneficiary attached to it. It's Hopefully. pretty pretty <laughs> pretty standard nowadays that that will be the case. Not always. Mary is right on that. But that means it's not going to go through your your will. It's not going to go through your probate if you have a beneficiary on it. So first of all, understanding that that's going to go directly to whoever you named as a beneficiary. And then knowing that that beneficiary then is going to be responsible for any taxes that haven't been paid on it. Um, So there's a lot of planning and strategy that can take place in that if the beneficiary is in a position to wait to take some of the money. Um, But not, not everybody does. So just understanding that those assets going down to the beneficiaries that still owe taxes on them could be a tax liability to them um, whenever they take the money out. Right. And that's why we like to separate them in the family estate organizer is that the tax consequences to beneficiaries are so different between pre-tax, tax favored and post-tax investments that it's just nice to keep them separated. Congratulations to Mary Sturk and the team at Sturk Financial for earning a spot on multiple Forbes lists for seven years running, including 2018 to 2024 Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors, 2018 to 2021 Forbes Top Women Wealth Advisors, and 2022 to 2024 Forbes Best in State Women, number one in South Dakota. Welcome back to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today we're talking about the concept of a family estate organizer, which is basically a filing system that if you're single is something you create to keep track of all your things that is going to help your beneficiaries in the long run. And if you're married is something that's a mutual filing system where your spouse will always know where to go to find out information about what you have and how to find the things you have once you're maybe no longer have the capacity to organize all of this yourself. This is a huge gift for the ones that you love in your life. And that's why we feel so compelled to talk about this in kind of a higher level of detail. So we've been talking about what goes into the family estate organizer. And we talked about your bank account information, post pre-tax and tax favored investments. And the next thing that you'll want to have a segment for in your family estate organizer is um, anything that is going to be an income for you in your later years. Okay. So if you're getting any kind of income from a pension or from social security, you'll want to have records of this because if you pass away, somebody has to figure out how to stop or continue that income, but they have to know what's the right thing to do. So we've had situations before where somebody didn't realize they were supposed to change something and they've ended up having years of income coming in from something that they weren't supposed to get because they never notified the company that that person had passed away and they ended up having to pay that all back. That would not be a very fun check to write. No, 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 that would be horrible. (laughs) Another thing that you're going to want to have in your family estate organizer is material related to your insurance. So one segment we usually have entirely devoted to long-term care planning. So whether it's a nursing home or home health care type policy, or even if you've just declined to pursue that, you would want to have records in there because when you need that kind of care, somebody's going to be wondering if you have insurance. (laughs) And there's a lot of complexity that can come into that category. It's not always just long-term care insurance. Sometimes it's, you know, belonging to an organization that pays for your helicopter rides to the hospital if you have to. I know some people have that that or belonging to an organization that helps with ambulance services or things like that are becoming more and more um, common. So knowing what all things can be taken advantage of when that situation hits will be very helpful for your um, power of attorneys to, to know so that they can utilize these things that you've been planning for your whole life. Absolutely. Along the lines of insurance, then we have a separate segment in the family estate organizer where you can keep information about your life insurance policies. Obviously, if something happens and there's a death benefit to be payable, rather than sorting through lots of files, it's nice to be able to go to the family estate organizer and know exactly what's out there and exactly what companies need to be contacted to make a claim. Yeah, this is the one I probably see most frequently there's old information on. Um, Mm -hmm. People had policies back in the day, stopped paying on them, transferred them, whatever the case may be, Um, but they still have the old policies in there and it's 
a big question of, I don't know, is it active or is it not active? Who knows? And so you have to spend time tracking it down. And um, a lot of times when you call the companies, you know, they're going to transfer around because the insurance company has been sold a few times and Mm -hmm. then they can't even talk to you because you're not the owner. So um, keeping that in in accuracy is going to be something that saves a lot of time for your your uh, power of attorneys and your executor. So we have kind of a unique service called our concierge service where we actually have a planner come out to somebody's house if it's necessary to help them go through an office or go through a series of files that might be too big to just bring into the office. And the idea behind that is if you are stepping into somebody else's life and trying to figure out how to make sense of it, you might have an entire office full of files like that to go through. (laughs) <laughs> and to the trained eye, we kind of know what to look for more than other things and what things might not be as effective to, you know, bring into the planning. So Kelsey, tell us a little bit about when you've gone out and done some of that. This is a really great tool because I said at the beginning uh, that that the longer we go through life, the more com- complicated and yep. and uh, messy things seem to get. It's not very clear and and clean cut anymore. So um, in, in coming out, we can quickly identify things that need to be explored, things that need to be researched to see if they are still good, things that you, do, you don't need to keep anymore. And I think that's probably one of the most valuable things that we can provide. Right. Is what to be able to get rid of. You can get yes. so many people keep things because they don't know if they need them or not, which is fine. Um, but when you're trying to sort through boxes and boxes and files and files and stacks and stacks of paper, knowing what's okay to get rid of is is probably more valuable than just about anything else we do there. Um, but we can help you look through all of those documents, figure out what it is that you have, help you figure out a way to organize it, um, help create the family estate organizer, but then also um, some additional ways to, to keep your documentation in a way that'll um, not get so cumbersome anymore. So it's it's very, very beneficial. Um, Especially for out-of-town adult children. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, and They're trying to figure things out and can't stay in town to go through them. Mm-hmm. And, and as, mm-hmm. as a person's mental capacity starts to slip, the problem gets bigger. Oh, sure. Um, any filing system they may have had before that is either not going to be consistent anymore or is not going to be followed at all anymore. I've seen both cases. Um, and, and again, it's just part of life, but we can assist in helping, you know, organize some of the, the, the things that are going on in, in that person's uh, paperwork and things like that. So. so here's some other things that belong in a family estate organizer. If you want to have input into what your funeral arrangements might be, down to here's what you want to be included in your obituary or here's the songs and the hymns that you want to be played at your funeral or here's the people that you'd like to be your pallbearers. This is a place where you can document that so that your wishes are known. There's also space in the family estate organizer for copies of your legal and personal documents. So if you have wills or power of attorney or things like that, those kind of things belong in your family estate organizer so somebody can grab this organizer and quickly be able to know where things are and who are the people that need to be notified and aware of things. We also think that there's a great um, idea to have property documents in there. So copies of the deeds to your house or property that you own. Sometimes people don't realize that, oh, yes, I've owned that spare lot across town (laughs) for many, many years. And they don't even realize that that has to be part of the estate. And property pretty frequently doesn't have a beneficiary listed. And so that's something that might have to go through that probate process. And so it's important for you to be able to understand what property somebody owns And it's not just necessarily real estate. It might be cars. It might be, um, you know, toys that you have or things like that. But if it's a significant piece of property, it's something you're going to want to have documentation on in your family estate organizer. Another thing that you're going to want to have in there is debt statements. So if you owe people money, then it's important to go ahead and note that in that because that's going to have to get settled out of your estate before your estate can be closed. You're also going to want to keep in, uh, a copy of your income tax returns in there. Um, there's, Just the latest one, I would say. Yep, mm-hmm. the latest one. And and that's for, for two purposes. One, that people know that they're being filed and, and they can see the documentation on that. But two is, 
you know, we might, that is, it's another way to know where income's coming from and another way to uncover information that um, you might not have put in here. So it's just, again, another um, tool for that detective to use to help figure everything out at uh, the time that they need to. Now, sometimes people ask us questions like, well, should I be putting my original documents into here or should I be putting copies into here? And I guess that completely depends on what your own personal preference is. Certain documents like, you know, maybe your marriage certificate or a divorce decree or your actual will, you might want to keep some of those in a safe deposit box and then have copies of them in your family state organizer with a note that says, here's where to find my original documents. Yes, and having those original documents in an organized fashion in a secure place is very important because those are all things that are going to need to be gathered very quickly um, in the event of a death and to have to track that down to multiple different locations is, is something that's difficult. Okay, then we get down to the miscellaneous kind of stuff that is going to be some of the most helpful pieces for your beneficiaries. In a family estate organizer, we think you should have a beneficiary or beneficiary organizer where you have the information on all the beneficiaries that you know are going to be impacted by your estate, how to get a hold of these people. We also think you should have a keys organizer. And this is something that people don't think about, like just the idea of taking somebody else's key ring and having any clue what those keys go to. <laughs> That's not easy. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and so being, you know, some documentation of what these keys even go to is a good idea. We also think it's super important to have a passwords organizer that you update at least annually, especially if your passwords are kept on a computer, that you're consistently updating what that computer password is. Because if people can't get into your passwords, then they are not going to be able to get into your accounts. And a lot of times they're not even going to know some of the things that you maybe have out there because they can't unlock your computer to get into it. So the passwords organizer is another thing that's important. And then the last thing that we'll just mention before we close is that another important thing is who are the people in your life that would be important to contact if something happened to you? Your adult children or your loved ones don't always know who all the important people are in your life. And if you give them that heads up, it's going to make sure that the right people are contacted at the right time. So the family estate organizer is a great tool. I'll tell you that this normally comes with some of our financial services packages that we offer, but we are going to do a special um, uh, for this show that the first three people who call or email us and say that they'd like the family estate organizer, we're going to give three of these away for free. So we'll have you bring in documents. We'll give you a list of what you need to bring in. We'll help you create and organize them within the family estate organizer. And we'll set three people up with their very own family estate organizer. That will be a wonderful gift and a wonderful tool going forward. So call us or email us if that's something that you'd like. And thanks for listening to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. Stirk Financial Services is celebrating 20 years in 2024. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Osaic Wealth, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Osaic Wealth. Osaic Wealth is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Osaic Wealth. The rankings for the Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list by Shook Research is based on due diligence meetings to evaluate each advisor qualitatively, a major component of a ranking algorithm that includes client retention, industry experience, review of compliance records, firm nominations, and quantitative criteria, including assets under management and review generated for their firms.
The Forbes ranking of America's top women wealth advisors is based on an algorithm of qualitative and quantitative data, rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices learned through telephone and in-person interviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Forbes is a trademark of Forbes Media LLC. All rights reserved. Rankings and recognition from Forbes Shook Research are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a current or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance results and such rankings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor.